Hey people, what's going on? Ryan Wyatt for High Point Music and today we're going to be doing a very cool composition breakdown on Tinker Taylor Soldier Sailor Rich Man Poor Man Beggar Man Thief by Radiohead. So we've had a request from a viewer asking for a breakdown to demonstrate some of the tools going on with this tune and this one's been really cool to dig into and have a look and just see some of the wicked things that Radiohead are doing to create this very well crafted tune. Okay, so the approach we're going to take with this video, we're gonna break it down from three angles. We're gonna be looking at the lyrical perspective or content. I personally believe that the lyrics are a very potent tool when it comes to composition, particularly with pop music. Um, so to overlook those um, in the, when we're taking into account the storytelling aspect of a piece of music, I think, is a bit foolish I and mean, we're losing some of the insight that we can gain by what's going on with the music. Obviously, the second part is going to be we're going to do a harmonic breakdown. So all the tools, the phrasing, the scales, the modes, all of these really cool things that I can't wait to show you people to put into your own writing. And thirdly, we're going to have a look at the arrangement perspective um, with this tune. So arranging is one of those things where it doesn't have to be complicated to be effective and this tune is a very, very good demonstration of that. So to kick things off today, people, all you're gonna have to do is hit that subscribe button if you'd like to support us for future content. Other support links are below. If you would like to request content, you can do so by leaving a comment in the comment section on either any of our videos. And lastly, if you wanna get my help one-on-one, -on -one, just all those details, you can follow those below. So let's jump in and look at the first part. We're going to start breaking down. We're going to look at the verse section. So the verse, okay, so there's a little bit to delve into here. So I'll try not to rush through it because I don't want to leave out any details here. Firstly, we're going to look at the lyrical content. So before we kick things off, the Tinker Tailor Soldier part of the title, I'm going to have a guess it's taken from the film, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which is a movie where the plot is the British intelligence service has a, a mole inside of it, of, I think it is of Russian, from Russia. Um, so what's going on with that? It's very thinking, there's lots of going, lots of paying attention to the peripherals, very tense um, goings on, which you would expect in the world of espionage. I think that part of the tune, that part of the title, I should say, has heavily influenced how I view this tune because I believe there's some sort of similarities from that world of espionage being incorporated into the emotional content, the suspense of just constantly paying attention, almost paranoia as part of that. So with that, that's my opinion, could be wrong. If you know anything about the origin of this tune, leave it in the comments, I'd be super interested to hear about it. But here we go, jumping into the lyrics. So, so it's not part of the lyrics, just so you know at home. All the holes, at once are coming alive, step free, out of sight, out of mind, the lonely and their prey. So whatever paint picture is being painted for you with those lyrics, for me, it like I was mentioning before, that sort of, you're paying attention to everything, you're almost paranoid, paying attention to your environment, the peripherals, something might be menacing, it might not, could be insignificant. So, Let's step forward with our composition analysis from that point. What's very interesting about this section, the verse section where we're kicking off, is there's three phrases, okay? Those three phrases are three bars in length, which that contributes to the unique feel of this entire section. Also, what's going on with those phrases is the chords, the way they're laid out, I'm going to show it to you here, on the fretboard, but they're using major triads in very interesting intervals. So minor thirds, major seconds, minor seconds. I'll show you what I mean. So here's our three bar phrase. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and start again. So there's our three bars. So what's going on? We've got a D flat major, and then on the end of three, we're changing to an F flat major according to the chart. And then we go back to the D flat. Next end of three we're changing to is E flat. And then we go to F flat. And then we go up to G flat. 
All right, so this technique of using major chords to create interesting textures is not new for Radiohead. So Pyramid Song's a big one where it's using um, minor second intervals. The other one, um, Everything in its Right Place, is another one as well. So. As a brief example of what's going on there. So the other thing with the introduction is just borrowing that chord progression and the drum machine and keys are just outlining those chords. Okay, so we've outlined our harmony there with what's going on. Now we're going to start looking at the melody. So what we've got So we've got there, there's three phrases. All three phrases start off with a variation on this idea. Okay, so we're using a C flat, an A flat, and a D flat there. So to me, that looks very pentatonic in nature. I'm not gonna say it's 100 conclusively pentatonic, but it's, it's pretty darn close. Okay, so keep that in mind. So the first half of the phrases is using that pentatonic-like structure. The second half of the phrase is actually resolving in a scale-like movement. Okay, so we've got that tone, semitone. To me, sounds like a scale, right? And what happens, the second phrase is exactly the same, where it's... All right, where it's using that scale-like movement to answer that pentatonic structure. Okay, so what we're going to do, keep that in mind, so you've got the first half pentatonic structure, or pentatonic-like structure, don't want to be 100%, try and make it fit um, classical musical theory ideas, but then that scale-like answering of it. Now, when we add the chords, what I found with this, combining the chords and the melody together, is that those triads that are being moved around that the melody changes completely the harmony. We get a lot of mixolydian, use of the mixolydian mode in there, which is the fifth degree of your major scale, as well as the dominant seventh chords which accompany that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate that to you people now. So starting off on the D flat, there's our melody note. So all the holes, okay. Back to D flat at once. So straight away within that phrase, well that half of a phrase I should say, we've got two uses of the mixolydian mode and the dominant seventh chord. So, so you've got your D flat seventh there with the C flat being the dominant seventh there. All right, we've got that F flat sharing the same note there in the melody. We move on to this bit with our A flat. And then we're hitting the D flat in the melody there, which is targeting the dominant or the flat seventh of this chord again. All right, let's push forward. So all the holes at once are coming alive. Very cool what's going on here. We've got another dominant seventh or mixolydian mode being used. So when we go to our G flat, okay, we've got our fourth finger there on the E flat note, but when it goes up to that F flat there, again, that's targeting the flat seventh. So very, very interesting this was to me. So all the holes at once are coming alive. And then back to our D flat, targeting the tonic there. Okay, so the second half of the phrase, let's jump in, check out what else is going with those mixolydians. So step three, again, we've got that common note of the flat seventh over the D flat, jumping to the F flat triad there. So step three, back to D flat, out of sight. And there, we're just targeting it in a different position on the fretboard here, but that's the same D flat. Okay, so we've got our flat seventh over the E flat there. Okay, and then, so 
very common Radiohead or very distinct Radiohead phrasing there. I'll play that section again. So, step free, out of sight and out of mind. So what we've had there from the G flat, we've got the tonic there, just falling down to the third degree of the D flat seventh. Okay. And then it goes the lonely. Again, that interplay between the D flat seven and the F flat major triad, sharing those common notes. And they're praying. And the same idea with the common note over the F flat and the G flat there. All right, cool. So we've covered three bar phrases, which give those phrases their very distinct character. We've got the first half, which is using a pentatonic-like structure and then answering that with a scale very scale-like lineal response to that provides a nice bit of contrast. We are seeing massive targeting of the seventh degree of the dominant seventh chords using the mixolydian mode. And also we're seeing the use of common tones between not so common chords. So for example, your D flat seven to your F flat major, that's a very common pentatonic technique as well. So trying to find those common tones that coexist between chords which aren't necessarily related by a key. Okay, so second section we're gonna jump into and start breaking down is the chorus section. So taking a similar approach, we're gonna start off with the lyrics. So the ones you light your fires to keep away is crawling upon its belly. And all you have to do is say, yeah. Now I might've left a lyric out of the second phrase there. Um, but what, to me, what that says is taking or continuing on with that whole theme of espionage is what you've been observing and potentially a little bit paranoid about on the edge of the environment is starting to make itself more present. It's closing in on you. And that's pretty goddamn creepy, personally. <laughs> I'm sure you'd agree. So what we're going to do now, keep that creepiness in mind. We're going to start looking at what's going on. So demoing the chorus section, so three, four. Okay, so with this section, we still have the three phrases running through it. The phrase length actually extends out to four bars in length, as opposed to three bars in the verse. And also we've got the harmony changing as, as well as the chords, whether that's the chord written to a chord progression or the melody was written first, who knows with that one. But we've got a change there with both the chords and the melody. So let's jump in and have a look at what's going on with that chord progression, that foundation first, before we jump in and check out the melody. So we've got the chords F flat to G flat, and two and three and four and so two bars of that, and then one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So it's almost like a call and response between the F flat and the G flat then that very similar harmonic approach of using the major triads in those intervals, minor thirds, major seconds, minor seconds, moving around there. All right, cool. Let's jump in, check out the melody. Differing in contrast to the first verse, the melody is targeting the tonic, the root note, the first degree of the scale of each chord. So, Okay, so and then into those triads, like a little call and response section. So it's starting off on the fifth degree of the chord there. And then going up to the next chord and moving between the tonic and the fifth degree of the scale as well. So it's just looking like major triads there. The ninth is used there, the second degree of the scale, but compared to the verse, there's nothing too fancy, there's no mixolydian mode, there's 
it's very, it's almost pentatonic like. Okay, very, very pentatonic -y. There's not too many semi, or there is no semitone movements going on there. I'm not gonna say it's a pentatonic scale. I'll just say what it is. It's a fifth degree and the tonic being targeted. So just wrapping up the tools at play there, we've got the phrasing changing from three bars to four bars in length. We've got the chords changing from this really interesting use of major triads out to a more of a, a riff bass use of the major chords, but then reverting back to that previously stated idea of using the major triads in those interesting intervals. The lyrical content changes a bit, the theme is developing, it's intensifying a little bit. And with that idea of intensifying, we're gonna keep that in mind as we move into the second verse and the chorus. Now, the second verse and the chorus, harmonically, everything stays the same, okay? So there's nothing new presenting itself. The lyrics are still keeping an eye in mind with that idea of, as far as the verse goes, you've got the things acting on the peripheral. It's all the birds fly up high, I'm paraphrasing here. Um, all the fish swim down deep the lonely and their prey. So I would have left a few lyrics out there in a rush, but the whole idea of things are acting on the peripheral and then coming back into the chorus, the ones you light your fires to keep away. So that idea of things going on in the distance and then, okay, it's starting to become more present, more imminent. What's happening from an arrangement perspective, this is a big thing I wanted to get to in this section. When we come into the verse, second verse, the drums and the bass, so the rhythm section start to come in and build. Now, the way the tune started out, very sparse, drum machine, some keys, and the lyrics come in and they, you know, there's plenty of space for them to get very creative as they do with Tom York's reverb and delays. So, but with arranging, just like a movie, everything builds to a, a point in which it needs to resolve. And just slowly introducing instruments like this is a really nice way to develop the story without going, getting too crazy or having to think outside the box too much. Just gradually inputting those other instruments to build the dynamic intensity. As we get to the second chorus, the strings start to make themselves, well, they start to make an entry for starters. And then as we step out of that chorus, they start to really take over and take the lead. Um, which is where we're going to go to now with that one. So in terms of once we leave that second chorus, as I mentioned, harmonically everything stays the same from the first verse and chorus. It just translates to the second verse and chorus with arrangements added. So what we've got going on here is it modulates to A flat major, F flat, major seventh chords as well so keep that in mind I almost view this in my mind's eye as a another chorus because it's almost like carrying on that theme of the chorus okay um, but keeping that in mind these major seventh chords are very common um, again it's another technique that pops up in other Radiohead songs um, with that sort of major third or minor sixth movement of chords. The tune that sticks out for me where they use that before is um, track three of Hail to the Thief. It skipped my, uh, the title skipped my name. Drop it in the comments for sure people. Um, so that's a very common Radiohead idea which they use. Now let's get on to this string idea because eventually the chords drop out because the strings are moving around those harmonic guidelines of those chords. But once those chords drop out, the strings really step forward and take the center of the arrangement and really lead it. So what we've got going on is This melodic theme presents itself. And what it is, is you've got a semitone or a half step, whole step, half step, okay? 
That could also be looked at as the seventh, first, second, third of a melodic minor or harmonic minor scale, potentially. Okay, so once we've gone half step, whole step, half step, we move another semitone and do repeat the pattern. Half step, whole step, half step, and then ascend up there. Okay, so this is very interesting because it starts out presenting it very, very slow. The chordal instruments have dropped out at this point. The strings are really leading the dance here. As well as that, you've got some more Hail to the Thief-esque synth sounds. Um, where I End and You Begin is the tune which comes to mind where those really eerie, mysterious synth sounds which would fit in with that whole idea I was talking about before with the peripheral um, idea and the espionage theme with this tune. Now, what this theme actually does starts off very slow in eighth note subdivisions. But as it reappears later in the tune, it actually doubles the subdivision, so it goes down to a sixteenth note. So Okay, so this is a very, very common uh, way in which you can build ten tension by condensing a rhythmic subdivision. So the most common um, way you can think about this is just take your dance tracks, right? So you've got like your doof, 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 digga, 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 and then drop your beat. And that's very, very common, and it's a very effective way in which you can build tension just by collapsing those rhythmic subdivisions into the next smallest subdivision there. And this is one which happens slowly over that, um, the length of this bridge section. Okay, so very, very interesting. This next bit, I really, really want to get this across. So as the tune actually finishes, right, so it resolves on that A flat. And in my mind's eye, and I, this is just my own personal interpretation of it, as the strings are building, the rhythmic, the subdivision is getting smaller and smaller on that string part getting more dynamic, more tense. It almost represents, as I said, you like the chorus where those ideas are coming to the fore. Whatever's been hanging in the shadows is getting closer and closer and closer. And then you get that A flat major chord, which comes in at the end, where it's almost like it's presenting itself in a way which is quite harmless. All right? So you've got that idea where, okay, it's presented itself, but this is where... I, this bit blew me away. You hang on, you keep listening to the track after that major chord, right? And then you can all, all the sounds and the production and the soundscaping which goes on to that, the, the emotional, um, the emotional, I guess, the emotion changes, I'm trying to get that out, drastically from a nice relaxed major resolution to it starts to become a little bit unsettling. And you can almost, well this is, I make it out as you can, the soundscaping is, there's a conversation taking place. Where it's almost like a mole is coming, it's approaching you, and they're wanting you to go against your innermost convictions. Okay, so have a look into the track and let me know what you think, l listening to that. Because to me, keeping, like really digging into the theme of this tune and following it to the end and then hearing the chord. Because eventually, like, I heard the chord and I was like, oh yeah, cool, it's finished, it's resolved. And then you hang around and you're like, oh wait, there's more. And to me, that was a huge illustration. Blew my mind, or not blew my mind, but just reinforced that the detail in which Radiohead go to with their storytelling and their composition. They just, there's no stone left unturned. There's just, there's intent behind everything. Everything has a place. And that is such a very cool thing. It illustrates how in tune they are with their story and what they're trying to get across there. So wrapping up in the ideas of that section there, we start off with a modulation to another chord progression where it's major sevenths moving in either a major third or a minor sixth interval, A flat major seven to F flat major seven there. All right, the strings are moving between that the harmony very slowly. They present the theme, which is, to me, that just, I see Russia in my mind when I hear that phrase. Dark, grey day, snow everywhere. 
So you've got that, that theme is speeding up. It's getting more tense. You've got that Hail to the Thief-esque synth lines going in or ambience going in or going on in the background. And then you've got that major chord finishing and then the unsettling conversation of someone trying to convert you to the dark side, in my opinion. So that's my interpretation of that section. So there we go, people. If we're coming back and doing it, wrapping up everything in this tune, the verse, we looked at three bar phrases there's three of them pentatonic first half of the phrase scale like response to that heavy use of the mixolydian mode in the chorus four bar phrase length the harmony is targeting the fifth and the tonic of those major chords but there's more space there's it's like a call and response but there's plenty of breathing room for that and then all the points with the bridge section we've just gone through and covered there so that brings us to the end of this video. If you want to request some content like our viewer today, drop it in the comment section. Have yourselves a lovely day, evening, week, month, and I'll catch up with you all in future content. Until then.